Hello crafty friends! My name is Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl, and it is time for another oh-so-inspired collaboration. I hope you'll stick around, see who is inspiring us this month, and find out how you can hop along and see all of the other creations. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. If you're new to my channel or new to the Oh So Inspired collab, I am just one video of many that you'll see today during the hop. We will be taking inspiration from the same card, which I have up on screen now. The original creator is Sherry Moss, and I will have all of the links to that piece in the description box below. Also in that description box will be a link to a playlist with all of the videos. Now first you can try to click on the hashtag in the title to see if it will pull them up, but if it doesn't I will get those videos added as soon as I can so you can go see what the entire team has created. It's so fun to see how that one piece inspires so many different projects. Now, if you like today's hop and you want to see more, I will link past Oh So Inspired collabs in that description box below as well. For my card today, I think I might have that exact stencil that Sherry used for her card, so I decided to get that out and ink it up. I'm going to be making some rainbow corners, but instead of going with a traditional rainbow, I'm going to be using a random number generator and choosing one of the cards from my color cubes. So it will give me an idea of what colors I can use for my blending just to switch it up a little bit. Now, as I get into the process, I will tell you about other products and tools I use. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. I'm going to get started by picking my color combo. So I went to random.org on my phone and I put in one through 500 and it chose card number 474 for me. And that is in the second box. So I got through there and found it and there are pretty colors, but I'll be honest. I almost set this off to the side thinking there's no way I can make a rainbow out of this, but I did want to persevere since that was the whole point was to kind of make an alternative rainbow so I went through my cardstock swatches and set those up against each of the colors on the card and I just found the best ink I had for it some were tailored expressions some were Gina K designs and then for the black I used memento tuxedo black I will have uh, links to the colors and the colors listed in the description box below to do the ink blending, I kind of temporarily tack my cardstock piece down to a grid paper and I'm going to go ahead and mark the corners in case I need to pull this up later, I'll know exactly where it should be. Then I brought in my fun rainbow stencil and I did decide that I would just make a single rainbow in the lower right hand corner and once again I'm going to use that grid paper to line up my stencil because this is a two step stencil all know when I switch them out exactly where the bottom right hand corner should go. Now if you don't have grid paper to do this that's fine. Do though just go ahead and use some pencils to mark around the corners of your stencil. I'm going to get started by stenciling the smallest arc in the black. Just because black might not be the most fun color for a rainbow, I wanted it to have the arc with the least. So I did almost forget to cover up the rest of the rainbow with some sticky notes, but I did bring those in so I didn't affect another arc. Now for the second arc on this one, it's actually going to be the middle color. It's not going to be the one right next to the black. So I made sure I had the right color. I covered up all the other openings and ink blended those. I just kind of ink blended until I had 
a nice color or a nice saturation that I wanted and then I moved on to each remaining color. Then you won't see it but when I went to switch out to the second stencil I once again used the pencil markings for that and then I used the remaining two colors and did the ink blending. And now it's time for my favorite part of ink blending, the reveal. Let me know in the comment section below if that's your favorite too. Now I did tell you I was worried about this color combo, but I ended up loving the rainbow and how it looked. It was just such a fun take on a rainbow and I'm so glad that I decided to stick with that card. I wanted to cut this piece down a little bit for the front of my card, so I started by cutting the rainbows so the edges were straight and the color bled. Then I cut off the white sides until that finished piece was four and three quarters by three and a half. I then brought in a piece of black cardstock and just cut this a little larger for a black mat. For my sentiment and to match the second from the smallest arc, I brought in a scrap of mold wine cardstock and a thank you die and cut out three copies of that. I wanted to help the thank you stand out from the rainbow, so I brought in a scrap of vellum, measured the height of my thank you, and then cut a scrap of vellum to one and three quarters inches tall. Then before I place these together, I added adhesive to each of the three thank yous, stacked those up, and set them off to the side for about five minutes to dry. While those were drying, I went ahead and got the vellum placed onto the rainbow piece, and I left those long ends on it so I could just wrap those around the back and adhere that way. That's a quick, easy way to hide your adhesive when you're using vellum. This piece then got adhered to the black mat. Off camera, I cut and folded a card base and cut a piece of white cardstock to go on the inside. Since the card base was so dark, this will help the personal message be easier to read later. I chose the mold wine because that's the same cardstock I used for the thank you. By this time, my sentiment was dry, so I added the ink blended piece to the front center of the card base, and then I added some adhesive to the back of the die cut thank yous and got those put in place. Once again, I let this dry for about five minutes before moving on. I wanted to do a little bit more embellishing before I called this card done, so I got out some black enamel dots and then gems in a light pink and dark pink just to kind of go with the colors of the rainbow. I placed a trio, one of each color, in the upper left of the thank you, and then I placed a light and dark pink gem down on the bottom right. And here are some close-up looks at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I was inspired to create this quick, fun, and easy thank you card using Sherry's original piece's inspiration and that randomly selected color cube card. If you were, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Don't forget to visit all of the other collaborators in the hop. Again, you can try the hashtag in the title, or I will have that playlist in the description box updated ASAP. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.